Microsoft has open sourced bitnet.cpp and that is a big news. In simple words, what this news means is that now you can run mega huge models like in 72 billion, maybe even more on a CPU very soon. The reason being is that the precision of these models has been reduced to one bit. I already have covered a lot of this bitnet models, the whole research behind them in very simple words on the channel. So if you're interested, just search with bitnet and you should be able to find a lot of videos around it. I think it is one of the most exciting technologies and development of this year and Microsoft is at the forefront. Bitnet.cpp is a super efficient one bit LLM inference framework that runs directly on your CPU. So which means is that you can run 100 billion models or even more on local devices with up to six times speed ups and 82.2% less energy. No GPU is required whatsoever. Bitnet is pave, really paving the way for a new era of 1-bit LLMs. This 1-bit or 1.58-bit to be exact LLM defines a new scaling law and recipe for training new generations of LLMs that are both high performance and cost effective. It also enables a new computation paradigm and opens the door for designing specific hardware optimized for 1-bit LLMs. So in this video, we are going to install this bitnet.cpp and then we will see how the basic inference work with it. Also, you can install it on Ubuntu Linux or Windows or Mac OS. Instructions will be the same as I'm going to do here with only one difference. You would need to install Visual Studio on your and the latest one, the 2022, I guess it's the latest on your Windows system in order to get it working. And from there, you would need to install CMake and CLang, which are a few of the build libraries. On Ubuntu, you install these um, C++ libraries differently, and I will show you how you can do that. So other than that, all the steps will be the same for Windows, Linux and, Linux and any other operating system. Another cool thing is that not only it supports x86 architecture but also the ARM architecture so you can run it on both at the moment it only runs on CPU there is no GPU or NPU support available or TPU support available so but that is fine we are happy to run it on CPU so let's see how it works before I do that let me introduce you to the mast compute for sponsoring the VM for this video they are running this hacktober 2024 this month where I will be one of the judges you can submit your LLM generated text image or both or even video in order to um, context uh, in this hacktober and you stand a chance to win $100 in free GPU compute credit so do check it out I will drop the link to their website plus 50% discount coupon on in videos description Okay, so that's out of the way. Let's go and install it on my Ubuntu system. As you can see, I'm running Ubuntu 22.04. So first up, as I said earlier, we need to install CLang and CMake on Ubuntu. And if you are using Windows, just install Visual Studio instead of this. So let me run it. It is going to take, and it's already, okay, so it says uh, I need to be a root. So for root, I'll just go like this and then and for if you are of course for just like in windows you have to be admin user in order to get it installed so let's wait for it it is going to take a bit of a time it installs a lot of stuffs like clang cmake and few other things i guess like poly and lib c++ all the c++ libraries which are required for build purposes and this has been installed took around a couple of minutes Next up, let's create a virtual environment with Conda and I'm going to go with Python 3.9 as has been recommended in their repo. Okay, so what did I do wrong here? Okay, so I'm just still with the root user. So I'm just going to do exit and let's run it again because I have installed with my Ubuntu user. Okay, so this shouldn't take too long. This is going to just activate it. Go and that is cool. Next up, let's git clone the repo of this bitnet cpp. 
and I will drop the link to it in video's description. Shouldn't take too long. As long as you have those C libraries installed, you should be good. And now we are in the bitnet lib uh, directory. Next up, let's install all the requirements. Again, this is going to take a minute. And that is all done. So that completes our installation. Next up, let's download the Hugging Face model. And you see, we are just using their setup dot underscore env, which they have provided. And this is where our model is. And you can see it is 1.58 or 1 uh, bit LLM. And this one is Llama 38 billion. And there are few other available on Hugging Face. And I'm more than sure this number will keep growing. In the first time you are going to run this inference, uh, run this model download, it is going to compile the code using CMake. So make sure it is installed. Let's wait for it. So the compile has taken with this CMake around 10 minutes. So just be patient with it, whether you are using Windows or Linux. And now you can see that it is downloading the model from Hugging Face and converting the model to GGUF quantized format. So let's wait for it. And while that happens, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are AgentQL. AgentQL is a query language that turns any web page into a data source. You can, um, it's query language for extracting data from web pages very quickly, easily, and at scale with its Python SDK and live debugging tool, you can scrape and interact with web content. AgentQL works on any page. It is resilient, it is reusable and it structures the output according to the shape of your query. I will also drop the link to their website in video's description. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. GGUF conversion is still running. And the model is converted to the GGUF format. Let's clear the screen. And now we can do the inference with the help of this script. So if you look at this script, all we are doing, we are running the inference. We are specifying the model which we have just downloaded. And then there is a prompt with some of the temperature which determines the randomness of the response. So let me run it. And as soon as I ran it, it is it has started printing out the response. And at the top, it has just printed out some of the parameters, seed and all that stuff. There you go. So you see, it has given us sampling time, loading time. It is fairly quick. So 53 tokens in total. And this is the time it took just on the CPU. Let me just quickly go up and show you what happened there. So this is where we ran the inference. It loaded the Llama backend. It loaded the model, applied the LoRa adapter. If any, there was none, I guess. And then it has loaded it and then telling us what are the layers and KV cache of the model was there. Control token, what special token it used. Maybe specific to the Llama three model and then there are a few other parameters the, how many layers were there in the model embeddings rope scaling context and all those uh, stuff which is part of the model and then from there it towards the end as i showed you earlier it has printed uh, given us these are the logics which is the raw output or raw probabilities from the model and then this is the response of our llm how good is that and similarly, you can just ask it any question you like, like I'm now asking, asking it how many L's are there in volleyball and then just print it. It is again going to print the whole stuff. I think I would need some way to suppress this, but you see there is, there it is. It has printed. The answer is wrong, but let's not worry about it. The main point is that now we can run this 8 billion model, which is a Llama 3 on just CPU. And the speed is not bad at all, at all as you have just seen in the real time. So that's it, guys. I'm very excited really about it and really hats off to Microsoft for open sourcing BitNet. Now you know how to get it installed. Just to repeat again, uh, all you need to do for Windows, just replace where I have done the first bash script with the Visual Studio 2022 and then run it. And before I let you go, I just wanted to show you this is my CPU configuration where it was running. But try it out. I think it should work on any modern CPU very easily. Okay, that's it. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot.
थैंक यू फॉर ऑल द सपोर्ट हाईली हाईली अप्रिशिएटेड